Welcome. In this video, let's examine another problem solving technique, which I call solve a smaller version of the same problem. All right, so I've selected a problem from the 2007 American Mathematics Competition exam for the 10th grade as the, the B exam. Um, and I guess we'll start with the, the first technique that we always follow in solving problems, just to read the question and have an emotional reaction to it. All right, so here goes, here's the question. It's in the top right corner here. A set of 25 square blocks is arranged into a five by five square. How many different combinations of three blocks can be selected from that set so that no two are in the same row or column? Okay, here's my emotional reaction. Heavens. All right. Well, the way to cope with an emotional reaction is just have a deep breath. <sighs> and then uh, I guess go on to step two. So we calm down nerves a little bit. And step two is to reread the question and try to make sense of the different components of it. All right, here goes. I'm going to reread this question. A set of 25 square blocks is arranged into a five by five square. Okay, that's not too scary. In fact, in fact, I feel compelled to follow a technique from a previous uh, video on a uh, draw a picture that this seems to make me want to draw a picture. In fact, I will draw a five by five grid of squares representing those square blocks arranged in a five by five grid. All right, so here's a picture describing the very first line of the question. In fact, this is a very good technique. I've just done the most obvious thing I can think to do. Just do the obvious, just state the obvious about what the question's about. That gets you doing something. And once you've done something, you've actually gone over the first emotional hurdle of just getting started. So we've gone started. We've drawn a picture relevant to the problem. All right, now the rest of the question. How many different combinations of three blocks can be selected from that set so that no two are in the same row or column? All right, well, there's one part of this question that scares me is this word, combinations. That sounds like a very mathy word. All right, I'm not going to worry about what it means because I don't actually know what it means right now in my head. Um, I'm going to see if I'll just battle on nonetheless, push forward and make sense of it. So what's the, what's the really question? How many different w things of three blocks can be selected from that set? So okay, what is it slowly? I have to choose three blocks from this set of things. All right, so that uh, no two are in the same row or column. All right, well, let's see if I make sense. Can I even do that? So I have to select three blocks. So I'll choose this one. That's one of them and another two so that no two in the same row or column. So you see what I'm doing this technique. I'm following the first two techniques. One have an emotional reaction to the question and the second one is to try to understand the components. I've got to choose three blocks. I don't know what the word combination means. Not going to worry about it. But I have to choose three blocks so they're not in the same row or column. So I can do something like this, I guess. Here's three blocks uh, that's in the same column. Uh, that one works. That's not in the same row or the same column as anything else. All right, so I guess the question is, to make sense of the question is, uh, uh, how many ways can I do this? There's one way, so it can be done once, and now I've got to figure out how many ways I can do it in all. To which I say, ick, that seems like it's going to be a really big challenge. That's going to be hard. All right, well, I followed a technique of drawing a picture, but the technique I want to explore today is, as I said before, solve a smaller version of the same problem. Well, this does seem big. This seems like it's going to be lots and lots and lots and lots, hundreds and thousands of possible answers, I'm guessing, or at least more than 20. Um, so it feels too big. So how can I do a smaller version of the same problem? Well, I can see two ways to do a smaller version. Five by five grid of squares, that seems a lot. So maybe I can make this smaller. That's one version. So instead of doing a five by five, maybe I'll do a four by four, or even smaller, three by three, or even smaller, two by But if I want to go as small as it can be, a one by one. That's one way I can make this problem smaller. And here's another way I can make the problem smaller. Instead of choosing three blocks, what if I chose only two blocks or one block? All right, so let's, let's do both. I don't know which, where I'm going with this. I'm just fumbling my way through, but I'm gonna follow the technique of solving a smaller version. So let's do a very, this technique here, and we'll do this smaller version over here. All right, instead of doing a five by five square grid, let's do it the smaller square grid I can think of, a one by one grid. How many ways can I select three blocks in this picture so that none in the t same row or column? Well, I can't even select three blocks, so the answer is zero ways. All right, one by one, solved. A two by two grid. Here's a two by two grid. How many ways can I select three blocks? Well, one, two, three, so that no two are in the same row or column. Well, that didn't work. Um, in fact, I can see now that what do I try to do whenever I select three blocks, I'm always gonna have some in the same row and column. It's never gonna work zero ways. All right, I've solved the two by two problem. Three by three problem. All right, let's do that one. Little scratch picture here. How many ways can I select three blocks so that no two are in the same row or column? Well, maybe I'll select this one, not do the same row or column. I can select this one and this one. Oh, there's at least one way. Ooh, okay. Maybe there's another way. Let's see if I can draw yet another way. 
In fact, since there are three rows and they each have to be on different rows, I'm now going to have one on the first row, one on the second row, one on the third row. There's another one that has a solution with the top left of the first row taken. Well, yes, I guess I could do this. All right, that's two ways. Uh, we well, might as well just go ahead and completely solve the 3x3 three three problem. I'm just going to do something. There's no need for speed. If I choose the cell again, I think I've got both ways. So maybe I'll do the next one over. Um, I could do this one and this one. And I think there's another one with that top middle cell done. Uh, what would be? Instead of choosing this one, I've already done that one. Can't do that. Choose this instead, and I guess that forces that guy. All right. Um, any other ways? This is very tiny. Uh, top left done, top middle done, I guess the top right done. Uh, I guess I'll do something like this and this. And can I do another one for the top right? Doo, 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 doo. Uh, done that one, can't do this one. Oh, this one, I can do those. Uh, I think that's all for the top right, top middle and top left. I think there are six ways to solve the three by three problem. All right, that was by brute force. Now the four by four. Oh dear. Oh dear. I'm just going to say ick to that one. That seems hard. All right. I'm giving up on the five, on doing the sm this smaller version. I think that's it. Um, I will try instead the other smaller version. All right. Okay. Well, let's just draw a dividing line. Get my pen. So doing three blocks, let's go back to the five by five grid and instead of choosing three, let's ask how many ways are there to choose one. So you see, I'm just really flailing. I've no idea where I'm going. I'm just trying stuff. Um, how many ways can I choose one block? Well, that one block can be any of these 25, I guess. So I guess there's 25 ways to choose one block. Aha. So maybe I'll just choose something like that. Done. Or could I choose this one or this one. All right, how about the problem for two blocks? How many ways can I solve two blocks? All right, well, um, hmm. well, I've got to choose one block, and I've already done it. Uh, so, oh, interesting. To choose a second block, I can't choose anything in this column, and I can't choose anything in this row. So in order to choose a second block, I'm going to have to choose something outside of this, either up here or up here. Like, actually, do you see I've got 16 squares to choose from? So to choose a second block, I've got 16 options. Ah, there are 25 choices for a first block. That leaving me 16 options for a second block. So it looks like there are 25 times 16. Ooh, what's that? That's um, uh, doubling and halving. That's the same as 50 times 8. That's the same as 400 ways it looks like to choose two blocks. Well, then I think I'm onto it. Three blocks. I can do the same thing. Once I've chosen the first block, 25 ways, 16 ways for a second block, how many ways that leave for a third block? So for the third block, it can't be in the same row or column as any of the blocks I've just chosen. And if you look, that leaves me a choice of nine possible places for a third block. And maybe I'll choose this one. And voila, there's a solution. So there are nine choices for a third, which makes me think 25 times 16 times 9 is really 400 times 9. The answer is 3,600 ways to choose three blocks. Woohoo! It looks like we've solved the problem. So, actually, brilliant. The technique of solving a smaller version of the problem on this path didn't seem to yield much. It got me just into a little pickle, but on this path got me the answer 3600. Alright, all is looking grand and fabulous right now, but there is a fourth technique step to a problem solving, which is check your solution. And when we're in a competition or an exam, speed is considered paramount, and we might not bother to do this. However, it's very important. In fact, I'm glad I did this first technique, because this offers a very simple means for checking our solution. Let's go back to the 3x3 three three case, which we've got an answer for. Sorry, where's my pen? And let's solve it by the same technique we just did in blue here. So the question was, in a 3x3 three three case, we know there are six answers. We've actually done it. So... How we solved it before in blue was we said we need to choose a first block, maybe something like this. There are, in this case, nine choices for the first block. And once we've chosen the first block, we're going to rule out a row and rule out a column, and that leaves four choices for a second block. Maybe it's this one. And once we've chosen that row 
uh, that a second block that rules out another row and rules out another column. And in this case, that leaves just one choice for that third block. So one choice for the third block. So according to this technique, the answer to the three by problem, three by three problem is nine choices times four choices times one choice is 36 possibilities. And now I'm going to panic because that we've seen is wrong. The answer is six. Oh dear. That means I don't trust this 3600. What's going on? All right, so here we are in the midst of a fabulous problem solving technique. I feel like I've solved the problem. I've actually taken the extra time to check my answer by solving it a second way, and I found something is amiss. The answer to the three by three problem in the, in the first technique by actually doing it was six, in the second technique was 36. That 36 is wrong, which means the second technique I used over here for 3600, I don't trust at all. I suspect it's wrong. Bother. All right, now here's the fourth technique, or I'm up to fifth technique in problem solving. When you're stuck and in a pickle, just put everything aside, put it down, go for a walk, and don't think about it. Let your subconscious, subconscious mull on what's happening. Now, of course, in a classroom or in a competition, you don't have the luxury to, to mull, which is a shame because that's what mathematicians do. When you're stuck, just put things aside and just let it be. Stuff, um, epiphanies and, and clarity will come to you. All right. Well, let's see, if, but we don't have this luxury now, so what are we going to do? Why is this 36 wrong in this technique when the answer is 6? What's going on? Well, obviously, we've counted more stuff. We've counted 36 things here as up to 6. Somehow we've done more than the problem asked for us in 36. And maybe the clue is that we've got the words first, second, and third going on. Let me clear the board a bit because I've got a mess here, a real mess. Clear some space. My board technique is not the best. What we did, just to reiterate our second technique, was we chose a first block. And let me be very honest and say one block was chosen first. First. I'll do a write a one for first. And then we chose a second block. And then we chose a third block. That's what we really did. Here we just label them as X's. We didn't actually keep track of the labels, which was first, which was second, which was third. But that's what we really did. Now, curiously, I could have chosen this one as first, and this one as second, and this one as third. But in terms of X's, these look the same. So actually, they're, in some sense, equivalent solutions. Or I could have chosen this one as first, this one as second, and this one as third. They'll be equivalent solutions as well. In fact, we see all the possible ways I could have ordered them, one, two, and three, in how I selected which was first, which was second, which was third, will give the same set of x's in the end. These are all basically the solution x, x, x. In fact, how many ways could I have chosen these x's as first, second, and third? Well, there are three choices which one would have been the regarded as the first, leaving two choices left for which would have been regarded as second, leaving three, uh, one choice left for which would have been regarded as third. So actually, there are three times two times one, six ways I could have labeled these x's one, two, and three. And all six ways correspond to the same picture of x's. That means I'm actually off by a factor of six. And if I think about it, 36 is off by a factor of six. If I divide by six, it means the true answer with x's, not labeled one, two, and three, should be 36 divided by six, which is six, which is what I got before. So I guess the technique that we had for the 5x5 five five grid of choosing three numbers, here it is, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What we really had is we chose one cell first, a second cell second, and a third cell third. In terms of X's, this would have collapsed to just being an X, an X, and an X. I didn't know what order they were coming in, but they're actually six possible orders those three x's could have come in. So I guess that means my answer of 3600 is also off by a factor of six. So the true answer to the problem is 3600 divided by six is 600 ways to select x's as follows so that no two are in the same row or same column. Oh my goodness. All right, there's a problem solving technique. Read the question, have an emotional reaction to it, that's fine. Then 
We read the question again and just do something. In this case, drawing a picture would seem natural. That got us going. And it got us going and drawing X's. And we did something fabulous. Um, things got hard, so we decided to work with a smaller problem. Great, try to solve a smaller version of the problem. And there was just two smaller versions that came to my mind. Maybe you can think of other ways to make this problem smaller. Okay, it turns out the first one was kind of a false lead. That's fine, go on false leads. I mean, this is what problem solving is about, just feeling your way through stuff. And, you know, false leads may happen. Um, but uh, the second technique turned out to give an answer. Well, actually, I'm glad we went on the first, first, first false lead because it turned out to be useful in the end because it allowed us to check our second answer, which is another problem solving technique, check what you're doing. And uh, in fact, that first false lead wasn't uh, useless at all. Helped us find out, check what was going on, and eventually we got to an answer that I now feel like I can trust. There's 600 ways to choose three x's and a grid of five by five, grid of squares, so that no two are in the same row or column. By the way, I never worried about the word combinations. I guess a combination is something about selecting things. Um, if I had to make a guess. But, you know, don't worry about jargon. If you can sort of uh, just nut your way through, just push on, we can make good educated guesses about the mathematics and do something meaningful nonetheless. And if we sort of keep our cool and be willing to take deep breaths along the way, things just might fall into place. And when they do, it's a lot of fun. Now, of course, I can look at this problem and say, well, what if I made the problem bigger? What if I had, how many ways could I choose, say, uh, seven cells from a 10 by 10 grid? And what if I think my way through that? Well, who said that squares had to, the cells had to be rect, uh, square? What if I had a 20 by 30 rectangular grid and I was choosing six blocks in some way? I wonder what the problem, answer to those sorts of problems are. That could be a lot of fun. Anyhow, there is one example of the technique of solving a small version of the problem. Thank you so much.